We will grow the Foreign Service to renew our commitment to diplomacy. We will double the size of the Peace Corps by its 50th anniversary on 2012. And we'll reach out to other nations to engage their young people in similar programs so that we work side by side to take on the common challenges that confront all humanity. Give schools resources to offer new service opportunities. 
At the community level, we'll develop public-private partnerships so students can serve more outside the classroom. For college students, I proposed an annual American Opportunity Tax Credit of $4,000 to make tuition more affordable. But to receive this credit, we'll require 100 hours of public service. And we'll amend the federal work study program so that nearly $250 million will help more than 200,000 college students work in part-time service jobs each and every year. We won't leave out the nearly 2 million young Americans who are out of school and out of work. Instead, we'll use service to tighten their bonds to the American family and put them on a pathway to success. We'll enlist them in the energy pool so that disadvantaged young people can find useful work and gain skills in a growing industry. We'll expand the Youth Build Program, which puts young Americans to work building affordable housing in America's poorest communities, giving them valuable skills and a chance to complete a high school education. Today, there are 8,000 youth build slots. As president, I will expand that to 50,000. Now, I know what the cynics will say, because I've heard them all my life. These are the voices that will tell you not just what you can't do, but what you won't do. Americans won't come together. Our allegiance doesn't go beyond our political party, or our particular region, or our particular religious denomination. Young Americans won't serve their country. They're too selfish, or they're too lazy. This is the soft sell of the status quo. The voice that tells you to settle, because settling isn't that bad. So let me ask you to stop and consider this meeting that we're having. You go to the first school in the United States, west of Mississippi, to grant women the same rights and privileges as men. You go to a school that resolved in 1870, just a few years after the Civil War, that race would not be a factor in admission. Thank you. 